Jimmy. Welcome back to the Motor City. Well, thanks so much, Ron. Glad to have you here. Thank you. Now you're back at Comerica Park, third year in a row. Yeah. Um, how does it feel to 40,000 people staring at you, out at you on stage? Well, I, you know, it's there's, it's a very special feeling. First of all, coming back, uh, there's no other place on tour that we work in the middle of a large metropolitan city, and. Uh, when I, when I was first offered, we don't do many stadiums, and uh, but uh, Michigan audiences have always had a special place in my heart for it because uh, uh, unbeknownst to a lot of people, I started out many, many years ago playing in a little club called the Raven Gallery out in Southfield and uh, in club circuit days. and. We worked our way up through the through those uh, those years of clubs and places like that to where we actually got to open for Jerry Jeff Walker at uh, at Pine Knob. And now you're here. Yeah, and then we got to be the headliner at Pine Knob, which is still, you know, one of the, it's still one of the great venues as a, as a performer because of the, of the way it was built with a low presidium stage and you know the way that they. You know, it's one of the original sheds that's out there. There are very few of those left. We actually played one the other night in Woodstock, New York, which reminds me a lot of Pine Knob and Merriweather Post. So places like that, when I got to the level where uh, I was headlining, uh, it came with a lot of territory because I didn't just drop in from another planet. It was, it was uh, I would say it was a position well earned because you worked your way up that ladder till you could get to where you could headline. So. I was very comfortable playing out there to the diehard Michigan Parrot Heads because I, I know I know how the musical tastes of this state are and where, where people come from. I, was, I used to spend a lot of time with my friend Jim Harrison up on um, Lake Michigan and Lake Leland and up in that part of the state. And, and for all the years I worked Ann Arbor and East Lansing during college gigs, I, I got a lot of Michigan in here and I know how loyal fans are. Plus, half the state's in Florida in the winter anyway. Exactly. So you're known for Florida, but there's a lot of Michigan inside you too. There, there, there is, and, and it's appreciation of an audience. And then when hard times started uh, started happening in Detroit, I remember a, a couple of years ago because we were looking at it, and nobody would come to Detroit uh, to do a show. And I said, uh, and I was, there were people in my camp who go, you know, it's not nobody's selling there. And I said, we're going to play Detroit. I said, you know. It's not that, you know, I don't care if a thousand people show up, or I don't care if 18,000 people show up. It's about, they have been that good to me, and uh, I'd like to be involved in a way showing people that there are other things that are happening there than the sound bites that you hear about, the bad stuff that's happening in Detroit. So we did it, and we went, to, we went in the heart of the recession, and God bless everybody, it sold out in about three minutes. You know, and I knew it. I, I knew it was going to happen. You know, if it hadn't happened, it wouldn't have mattered to me. But I know, I know that people needed that. You know, and uh, so then, when the opportunity came here the first time to play, uh, again, I thought that's a great thing because I knew other people that I was involved with. I know from here, were involved in trying to, you know, what Bill Ford's done and what people have done down here and what Mr. I's done here and things people from here being very loyal to where they come from to do something to make a difference. I just I appreciated that so I thought it would be fun to do it and then I walked on the stage last year the day Detroit declared bankruptcy. <laughs> now I don't know many other performers that have done that either to walk into a major metropolitan city that when you're supposed to be the king of fun they declare bankruptcy on the day that you arrive into town. I thought how do you turn this around? So I walked up there, and I can remember I said, "Well, this is the first day of a new Detroit. Let's have a party." And I was there, and as a Detroit parrot head, I thank you. Well, you're welcome. And then, the good news is, I was talking. I know you know Gary Graff, and I was talking to him the other day, and he and I, uh, I've been doing interviews with Gary for I don't know 30 years almost, because you know he was uh, another, <clears throat> another good music journalist who understood what we were doing. And, and appreciated it too. We've always kept, uh, he knew that I had a, a link in here and he was kind of part of that link to find out because I would always pick his brain about what's really going on. And we we're talking about it the other day that in a, it, what a difference a year makes, you know? And, uh, and, and I'm glad that in some way we had a tiny bit to do with 
with letting people know that uh, Detroit was on the way back. So it's a small part. There are a lot of other people doing a lot larger things, but it's good to know that still we can come in here and downtown Detroit turns into a beach when we come to town. And uh, I like that legacy. Yeah, that's cool. Um, next month, the uh, bankruptcy court is starting in its final proceeding. So very, very close to when you hear this time around. Yeah, I know it. So, uh, and then what I hear, and you know, I, I'd like to get further involved. And I was talking to a gentleman came in who was the, the speaker of the Senate. You'd know more, you're the news guy. And I was having dinner out in Birmingham and he came in and he was talking about the watch factory that came in and mm -hmm. I don't know what his name is but he's the speaker of the Michigan Senate and we were talking about it and he was talking about the things that are happening coming back here that people seem very positive and I said you know and saying any way or another you know I'd, I'd like to be involved in some way we got we got plenty of things it'd be nice to see a Margaritaville in downtown yep, Detroit. I was going to mention that on the riverfront yeah Perfect for Margarita. Yeah, I'm, so I'm staying very actively in touch with what's going on there, and if there's an opportunity that we could do something to lend a small helping hand, we'll be there. Perfect. Now let's talk about your tour. This one's for you, your 2014. Yeah. Uh, you've, you've already mentioned you played at the Woodstock uh, a couple weeks ago. You uh, the drive-in last month where you were yeah. in Fort Worth and you broadcasted it all. Uh, tell us about the tour and those very cool places that you played this tour. Well, I think what it is is we're trying, we're doing, we're having a lot of fun with it because, you know, we don't really need to be out here. It's more like we like to be out here and it's fun. And, and so, but I, I never want anything to get, uh, to get stale or kind of uh, repetitive. So we're always trying new things. The drive-in was an experiment to see if we could play one location and reach people in secondary markets that, for whether it was an economic reason or, a, or just a time constraint, couldn't make it to a show. So I'm kind of looking at stuff like that. And then we also introduced Margarita Internet TV as we're on the road. Then we're broadcasting live. Um, I'm not sure whether we're doing this here. Are we doing this one tonight? I, I think you are, we yeah. Are doing, we are doing tomorrow night. So we'll be, again, you know, we'll, we'll have 30,000 people in here, but some people still can't get here. And, I, and that's going tremendously and then Going to Woodstock, it only took me 45 years to get there, but it was, uh, I would highly recommend to anybody who was an, an ex-hippie or a child of an ex-hippie to go. Uh, there, There's a vibe there that's pretty incredible, and uh, we had a great show up there, and they built a beautiful facility, Alan Gary and the people that, that, you know, it's great that somebody, again, was part of, part of the great 60s generation that I come from, made a lot of money and gave some back and did something that lasts forever up there, which is what people are doing here in Detroit. So I like to see that and be involved with that. And so those were great shows. And then, you know, looking to come here, uh, we've had a four day run of, of great weather and it's supposed to be that. And we're having a lot of fun with this show. And more importantly, people are having a lot of fun. We're getting a lot of feedback from people who really like what we're doing in the show now. And then we have a little legacy going on because we've got young Brendan Mayer, who's Peter's son, is now in the band. And we're, we're, we're incubating him along on his own career, but letting him use our base as that instead of having to go out there and deal with the big bad music business. Letting him sing a song or two during the show. Well, he's doing that and it just, it's come kind of fun. I really like his work and I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't believe that he's got something to say and uh, has the potential of being an impacted young act, you know, and I'm, and he's, it's kind of close to home because he and my, my kids and Pete's kids and all, they grew up out on this road, you know, and, and it definitely shows that uh, it was so cool. We were somewhere in, uh, we were in Cincinnati the other night when he did his song, he got him said, it's the first show I came to see my dad play with Jimmy was in Cincinnati. Well, of course, everybody in the crowd, the mothers were weeping and I went, keep saying that, kid. <laughs> no. <laughs> but it, it's good to have, you know, and then, uh, and then the other thing is that Mike Utley and Mac McAnally, their kids are engaged, so they're about to be future father-in-law. So it, it's, it's pretty interesting that uh, second generation is kind of coming along and being a little more active and, and taking part in something that I hope lasts forever. And you seem to be looking for younger talent. Uh, Mishka is open for you, yeah. Hilo, Matt Hoggett, and then Brendan, so you seem to be looking lot for new music? Well, I know how difficult it was because I went through it, you know, and, and these days and times, though there's all this technology and in, instant access to everything, 
it, it amazes me that it's still hard for people to find their audiences out there, given there's so much uh, available for people to to uh, communicate through social networks and, and through music services and things. And But I still think it comes down to there's no real easy way around getting there. It, didn't, it doesn't matter that, you know, I came through the area of crooked record companies and, and you had to figure that out and you had to figure out, you know, where you could find and I, and I think I was lucky enough to, to have a journalism background on one side where I was I accidentally went to work for Billboard magazine, discovered a lot about the music business I didn't know that really saved me from making mistakes. So I'm just seeing kids that I like who have, who have good work ethic and, and talent and, and will put the time in that I've, I, I've got that experience that I can I can hopefully guide them in, in the right direction to do things. And it's exciting once you figure out where you can take somebody like a Brendan or like a Mishka, utilize this technology and find your audience. It, it can be done. Uh, and uh, we, haven't, we haven't had huge success with, the, with Acts yet, but I'm not looking for that. That'll happen on their own time. And, uh, but we can definitely, uh, uh, you know, I'm really kind of proud of what we put on Melbourne Records, you know, and uh, from, you know, Def Leppard to, to Brendan Mayer, we got it. <laughs> A little bit of everything. Yeah. So to talk about the story of you going to Key West for the first time, and uh, Key West is Jimmy Buffett Key West, they've gone to synonymous with each other, so talk about that. Well, it was a different Key West then, it was just, uh, it was the end of the road, and uh, I got there by accident. I was down in Miami. I was supposed to have a job, and the uh, the booker of the club had uh, had made a mistake. And I had two weeks. I had no money, and I'd done Jerry Jeff a favor. He let he let me live with him, and I actually worked in an auto repair shop for about two weeks uh, while I waited for because uh, I, I I didn't know anything about fixing car engines, but I knew boat engines, and I didn't tell him that. So, but but. I, <laughs> I'd had enough time in my shipyard and, and boat days to, to fake it until I got my job. And well, after I finished my job there, and a the guy asked me to come back, and I had a week off before I did that, he said, Let's go to Key West, and it changed my life. Exactly. Um, the future, what else does Jimmy Buffett want to do? He's already played Woodstock, the drive in, um, has an internet TV show. What, what else does Jimmy Buffett want to do? Anything exciting? I mean, you know what? I, what I am going to do is probably not be touring as much, and hopefully, what it, Marguerite Internet TV does is allow people to go, kind of, with me on my lifestyle. If I, when I'm not working, I am pretty active and living a pretty full life, and I enjoy it. And it seems that people are attracted to that almost as much as they are to the music. And uh, it's always been the source of the music, and now I, I see a. A future where there are not as many big shows because I'm I'm getting on up there and I want to spend a little more time out there doing things I want to do, but it'll, I'll always be working at some capacity. But I think using Margaritaville TV and uh, and encouraging younger acts to like uh, supply the other music to people that have enjoyed our music for a long time, it, it, that keeps me pretty busy and it's it's a lot of fun to do, and we're having success with it and. I think it, it, it's very enjoyable, like, suppose you can never get to Bora Bora, but I go there and play and you can see it instantly on Margaritaville TV. That's what I'm, I'm looking for out there, is to make little places, big places. And I know that it's a part of, we've only been doing this for a month, but the feedback we get from people who can't get to a show is how appreciative they are. And we work very hard on getting the quality of what we're doing up there now. You, and in, in the time that we were here, I mean, we could go into places and they didn't have a, they didn't have a T1 line or their, you know, their hookup for the internet was just pitiful. And the crowd comes in and the bandwidth shrinks down. So I immediately went to some of my friends who, uh, who make satellites for people to go to distant places. And uh, so we have, uh, we have some interesting technology, but we're completely free of, of any terrestrial systems and we go directly up to the satellites. We carry it with us now. So that's kind of the fun part. So that gives us that mobility. And with uh, the things in the video world, like TriCasters and things, we can really go places and do a quality show where I'm going to have fun and people that can't make it can go with me. So that's kind of what the future holds. Nothing big. And I, I want to go to space. To space, that's kind of big, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's okay, but I'm going to go.
Well, John Glenn, when he was 72, so that gives me five years, and I think I'm in pretty good shape, so I'm working on it. I'd cool. like to get up there. And Parrot Heads, last thing. Uh, talk about the Parrot Head culture, what you notice from the Parrot Heads when you're on stage. Uh, I noticed that it has, it has, uh, it has regenerated itself without me trying to hard sell it, and that's that's one of the things I appreciate the most. The people actually raise their children on this music into what is now probably fourth generation, and the the great thing I love is about still looking out, even at this this being one of the biggest venues we'll play, is looking in that audience at the dichotomy of people from age groups to uh, to just. To, to the costume variation, to the people just simply still having a good time out there. And, uh, and it just, you know, the big, the big thing is now that it seems some, that uh, Buffett virgins are the big things, and that there's a whole group of young girls who've never been to shows, and they're proud to be Buffett virgins. I don't know what that means, and I'm not going there. <laughs> and maybe you can go for it. You, you go interview a couple of Buffett virgins, uh, tell I'd me like what to. you find out, yeah. all right? Perfect. Okay, so you're here tomorrow with uh, here John Here tomorrow. Fogarty. Glad to be here. Okay, Jimmy Buffett, uh, one last thing. Yeah. What's your favorite song to sing of yours? That, that you oh, sing? God, I don't I know. know. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them, but uh, my favorite this month is Death of an Unpopular Poet. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Jimmy Buffett, thank you very Thanks, much. It's a pleasure. Okay. Yes, thank you. All right.